we are talking about uh, Sudden Shakespeare, Hamlet, with Lennox nice Forrester read on that. and Jason yeah. Compton. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So, you know, there's, there's, I guess theater got too easy for people, right? Because, because all of a sudden people started introducing all these, these limitations to make it harder. Like you do drunk Shakespeare. Yeah. Are we delicious? Does their quick They're one re- week? Yeah, yeah. Quick writing, rehearsing and presenting yeah. one week of a show. Are we delicious? It's like, it's like everybody was like, you know, we've done Strindberg. We've done Shakespeare, you know, American players. It's, it's just like shooting fish in a barrel now. We got to make this harder. Isn't it hard enough doing theater in Wisconsin in the least arts funded state in the nation practically somewhere in the very bottom in 45's America during this time isn't that hard enough it, it's it but you know even if you have a lot of funding theater is a terrible way of converting human labor into revenue like it's it's just <laughs> it's it's horribly inefficient no matter you know, what no matter what your your tax base is so um so you yeah. made a quicker yeah. way to do it we we yeah we're taking on we're taking on challenges with with Shakespeare uh, which we really have since uh, since the very beginning and certainly since rebooting. What is the challenge of sudden? The challenge of sudden Shakespeare is that director Lennox Forrester, as I gesture to my left for the radio uh. audience, uh, <laughs> has was able to cast the show back in December. We held a, a traditional audition process and we cast the show and then we did just a quick meet and greet where Lennox basically said, "Okay, everybody, here's your scripts. Go memorize them." See you on February 29th, bright and early in the morning, because that's the only day we have to rehearse together. Basically, that is exactly what happened. There was the little bit of the stomach flu in the middle of that, but... Uh, but that wasn't planned, I'm guessing. That was not planned. That and, would be a real limitation. Yeah, had, I, Everybody yeah. must have stomach flu for this production. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Come see it. It's going to be great. Surprise. Watch how it's they struggle real, through. Yeah. Yeah. Just sweat pouring down the face, honestly. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the concept. It's just running through the entire day, 12 hours, getting the rehearsal in, then doing it. I think the fun of this partly is like, well, Jason, I never thought of it the way you put it. It's like this is actually has some economic uh, realities to it that it makes it uh, yeah. a a little uh, yeah. <laughs> more practical. But the reason it works for an audience, I think, is because it's fun to see people struggle up against limitations. Yeah. And usually those limitations are simply, you know, have you studied your craft? Have you worked your voice down and in, deep into your diaphragm? Have you, under, you know, things like that. Yeah. But these are more fun limitations, like uh, we will only get to rehearse for one day. Uh, what do you think... And limitations create interesting artifacts. They create opportunities mm-hmm. and magic sometimes. What do you think is the limit? What, what does this limitation produce for you? Um, I think for me personally, when you have a longer rehearsal process, you have more of that directorly eye going in and picking out all the things that the director doesn't like and being like, we're going to keep this and we're going to tell you to just back off a little bit. Whereas I think when you have the single day, you're working mostly with what the actors raw have brought to you and you have to go with their first instinct rather than the polished directorly instinct that you have. So I think that's much more fun to watch in general, just to like figure out how to move them in the correct yeah. direction without like killing their vibe. Basically. I think in the rehearsal process too, actors uh, are going to adjust if they're generally rehearsing at home and then they come in and they see what the other actor is bringing. If it's two people on a scene, that's going to change yeah, and what people, you prepared. Yeah, and some people will have a chance to work with people that they're very familiar with because uh, we have we have a, a pretty good mix of, of some, some faithful, familiar faces and some people who have never worked with us before, who have never done Shakespeare before, who haven't appeared on a Madison stage before. So there will be those, those quick discoveries. And the other thing that I wanted to point out is that choosing Hamlet for this project, talking about opening up opportunities, people have naturally been asking, when is Madison Shakespeare going to do Hamlet? When are you going to do Hamlet? And the answer has always been this sort of like, well, we really should make sure that we have everything just right. You know, so when Lennox was talking about that director eye, but you, you know, you, you take on Hamlet, you go like, we would need to have the absolute best designers and the best director and the best concept. And oh, when will that ever come? And when I learned about this format last year, I, I said, wait, 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 no, this is perfect for Hamlet because it will force us to, if you'll pardon the expression, rip the Band-Aid off and just do Hamlet without waiting for perfection. It makes me think the perfect will not be the enemy of the good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's too much reverence in itself put upon Hamlet because it is, like, the major work that people think of. Like, it's the magnum opus, basically. And so that's always my issue with Shakespeare as well, is that too many people, when they're doing Shakespeare, they put too much reverence 
into it. Like Shakespeare was just a bro, honestly. So like it's all Bro like, writing verse for other bros. Yeah, bros writing verse for other bros. Marlo, my bro. Uh, <laughs> but like it's a lot of like crude jokes, a lot of fight scenes. That's like what Shakespeare did as a living for fun, basically. So like putting the idea that, oh, you have to use a high voice and OP and all that stuff. I think it's just kind of it takes too much away from it and it takes the fun away from doing Shakespeare when in reality Shakespeare is really fun and not just something that you have to slog through in high school English class. Does that approach also make it facilitate doing all this in one rehearsal? Um, I, now, what is your vision, maybe, is what I should really ask, yeah. given that you only have one day to execute yeah, I know. it. It's um, got to be a little bit more stripped down. Yeah, basically. Um, so my vision at this point, uh, we're doing a modern esque um idea of things uh so the way that i've been describing it in all of our design chats has usually been like one of like those old like faded like polaroids or like physically printed out photo from like walgreens it's like had some wear and tear and it's like that nice picturesque family photo but then sort of like in the corner in that nook there's like that weird smudge and you can't tell if it's like a person or if there's anything actually really there and it's just sort of that sense of doom like closing in on you and that's sort of the idea that i have in general with hamlet uh so i'm going for something like a little bit darker a little bit more sepia tone like that sort of getting really deep and gritty in there with still only having one data like <laughs> push a, it all out. L- like a Walgreens family photo That's with s- de- degradation possibly yep. artifacts that, that actually that could be an somewhere. uncle. Yep. Yeah. Yep, exactly. All right, got it. And then yeah. the other element of the the, the stripped down production that you mentioned, we're doing this in in partnership and as a benefit for Madison Theater Guild, which as as some people know has a, a an aging firehouse you know chock full of costumes and props and set pieces and my directive was we've got to run this show out of what our partners MTG have in stock well so that's a not, lot that is not a limitation it, 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 well yes <laughs> and no I mean because you know, they don't have ever they have a lot but they don't have everything yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's like no we're not gonna we're not gonna build stuff we're not gonna buy okay. it this mm-hmm. has to come out of here and, and part of that is a challenge to MTG and everyone else to do more with what they have yeah I have to say that's uh, I've really enjoyed my time. Anytime I've gone over there to get a costume, oh yeah, um, oh yeah, it's just a a delight. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The t- but you're right; they don't have everything. It is a limited yeah. three dimensional space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they, they've got a lot of band uniforms, but they they're kind of in a in a limited range of sizes. They've got a lot yeah. of you know d- you know trench coats, but they all are this. Do color. they have a skull? Yeah. No, but we do have skulls. Yeah, we do have skulls. Oh, you break the rule for the skull. Uh, well, there was a little bit of you know bringing in from the outside for I occasional. I mean, didn't we break the rule for the I mean, foils? You bring your right, own skulls, I mean, but look, they're, they're we covered didn't, in We didn't flesh. personally pay knock for it off foils, you too. but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're down in the weeds with the skulls. There will be skulls, and forget about it There will be skulls. Now. There will be skulls. It's kind of important. Okay. Uh, so we're talking about sudden Shakespeare Hamlet. And uh, we've been speaking with Lennox Forrester and Jason Compton. If you'd like to see this show that we're talking about, it is Saturday, February 29th at 7.30 p.m., which happens to be the first and last day of rehearsal, as we've been saying. It's at the Bartell Theater in the uh, on the Drury stage. Uh, and uh, you can find tickets for all the Bartell shows and all the many companies at the Bartell website. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you.